Hey, Cameron Yates, Yates Contracting here, and on this episode of Remodeling America, I want to kind of show you a little bit of type of kind of soundproofing. It's, it's an insulation as well. There's plenty of videos you can find online where they talk about uh, cellulose insulation and how to hard pack it, soft pack it, loose fill, hard fill, those kinds of things, and, and then you can put it into walls after drywall's already up. So what we wanted to do here on this house is we actually wanted to add a little bit of soundproofing to the walls. We didn't want to do any exterior walls. The insulation on the walls are fine, but we wanted to put some soundproofing inside the walls. And we didn't want to do too much work where we tore all the drywall down, had to do trim, all those kinds of things. So we came up with, and we've seen several people do this before, but we came up with uh, a way where we could do as minimal amount of drywall patching as possible and get us a decent amount of soundproofing, not using too much material as well at the same time so basically what we're doing is we're doing a semi kind of loose fill uh, tight hard fill you know uh, cellulose insulation in the walls we went ahead and we went and drilled a uh, so you can see right here we went and drilled a the top probably about three inches down from the top of all the all the bays in the wall we went ahead and drilled about a four and a half inch hole all the way across to the tops of all the walls. And this was enough so we can get our pipe in into, into these holes. So what we did first is we actually just stuffed in about a foot down into the walls and we filled it up nice and tight and then we put it right up to the top of the walls and, and filled it up so that it was all the way into the walls. Now, a lot of guys will do uh, to get it a little more tightly packed. What they'll do is they'll do a smaller one and a half to two inch clear plastic pipe and they'll put it all the way down um, and bring it all the way up tighten it tighten it tighten it but we didn't really need that much insulation or that much soundproofing we just wanted to get just enough in there and without a bunch of holes so sometimes they'll do top middle and bottom holes we just went ahead and did a top hole used a fabric cloth kind of around the pipe and um, filled it all the way until it got tight and then did that top area. This way we kind of gave us plenty of soundproofing in all the bedrooms and um, this is also because of the, having the baby here so we wanted to soundproof that room as well. So this just has some soundproofing also what kind of helps with it if you're in a summer or the winter time and you don't want to heat or cool all your rooms you can close the vent in that room and it helps keep the rest of the house at a better temperature so you don't have to actually cool and heat that room as well. So that was one of the things we, we wanted to do it for at the same time. Um, There's a couple things we figured out with it. It definitely adds a, a lot of dust in the air so you want to make sure that you put a bunch of fans um, in the windows that you can to keep the dust flow out, seal off the areas where you can and also put um, cover up a lot of the things you don't want to get dust on. Um, I'll show you a little bit of video of what it looks like and and pretty much how we do it as well. show you how this uh, machine works but uh, just to give you an idea this is we're using a green fiber type of cellulose and this is the machine that you can actually pick up and rent from just Home Depot or, or wherever your big box store or somewhere else you can get it from but if you get like 20 bags you pretty much get it for free but I think it's 50 bucks a day so what happens is you've got uh, your bags of cellulose insulation that comes comp like compact and you have to kind of loosen it up a little bit and then get it in uh, I'll show you what it looks like inside and then basically get it in past 
these uh, these bars. And then there's an agitator down there that puts it into uh, a pump that pumps air through that and shoots the insulation and the air in the same amount. Okay, and this is just kind of what we use to agitate it a little bit ourselves. But uh, you don't want to fill these things up too much because they get kind of compact. And then on this side, let me come around. You'll see here's the power button. There's just a power button just pretty much on and off. And you plug it in on that side. And then here you've got pretty much the, what this does is the more you open it up, the more uh, cellulose that comes out. The fan itself or the air doesn't really change. It's just the cellulose. So if you, if you open it up more, it's, that's when more cellulose comes out. So we actually opened it up about this much, seemed to work out well. It actually helps us pack it a little bit harder because there's a lot more air to the amount of cellulose that comes out. But if you're just spraying in an attic, those kinds of things, you can probably open this up a lot larger, okay? And here's where the pipe attaches. Um, it was actually held on pretty tight, so we didn't have to use a pipe clamp or anything, but you might want to use a pipe clamp there. So basically what we'll do is as soon as the, um, it seems like it's getting a little bit tighter. As soon as the pitch of the fan gets a little bit higher, what we'll do is we'll actually turn it off and move it up to that top position like I was talking about, turn it back on, and then as soon as it gets a little higher, we turn it back off again, okay? You just wanna make sure you never don't overfill these things. This is about as much as you pretty much want in there whenever you're, uh, whenever you're doing this. We've also added a little bit of a, a fan here to kind of keep, there's a lot of dust that gets spit up from this, so you just wanna make sure you, clean up everything afterwards. I mean, this stuff is actually it's supposed to be environmental. It's fire resistant and organic, all those kinds of things. So it's not like it's crazy bad for the environment. You want to make sure that you keep the dust down, you keep the dust mask on, um, make sure you have a respirator, especially if you're working directly with it, those kinds of things. got uh, some of these drywall patches we've already put them back in so we basically with the holes that we cut we went ahead and kept the same pieces of drywall kept them off to the side and then we cut some wood strips to put behind those pieces of drywall screwed them in and then screwed the uh, drywall patches right back up so you can kind of see right here we've got our first coat of mud up on top um, we basically just used the uh, heavy-duty mesh tape on top of these and we just did them as light as possible so we could just kind of cover up the holes and this is just the first coat of mud that we're putting on we're just putting on some uh, some 20 minute run right now so we can get a nice uh, first coat and then we're going to come back and do one more coat on top of that sand that down we'll prime and paint that so we can get everything looking good we'll have to obviously paint the entire wall that we do but this way we don't have to do too much drywall patching so this is kind of a way we did it so where there wasn't too much patching that we had to do all right all right, so here's one of the rooms that we did, and it's pretty much the after. So we've already patched and sanded everything, and we went ahead and put a coat of paint, changed up the paint in this room. So we went ahead and I'll kind of show you what it looks like around here. So you pretty much can't, well, obviously it's been painted, so you shouldn't see uh, pretty much where everything's been. So we've already patched all the holes, painted everything, and after a little while of um, the space, they, they definitely said that it, it helped a lot with the sun. Now, now what's gonna happen is, it's not gonna 100% soundproof everything. Of course, I mean, you still have the doors. That's probably where most of the sound comes out of, but through the walls itself, any of the sound transferring through the walls has been extremely deadened. Um, you could always add another level of drywall or, uh, do, there's a couple other options to soundproof, but I think this is definitely giving them what they wanted. Uh, it's It's, Help to the soundproofing for sure. Also, any of the uh, rooms that you want, let's say you're not gonna be in for a little while and you wanna turn the AC off in those rooms, you know, shut the vents, it'll help keep the other rooms uh, warmer or colder, whichever one you wanna kind of do without having to um, heat or cool that room. So I think that's just another added benefit to it. So it's pretty much what it looks like and it, it came out pretty much how we had hoped. Uh, it's definitely, 
if you want to do something like this yourself, you're definitely going to need some help. Uh, it's not a one-man job, in my opinion. You're definitely going to need at least two, possibly even three people. Uh, you're also going to want some skill with drywall patching, that kind of thing. But if you always wanted to um, hire it out, it's, it's a bit labor-intensive, um, but it definitely helped. If you want to avoid doing this, I would say just put insulation in before you put the drywall up. But if you don't have that option, this is a great second option. So I hope you liked it. Uh, I hope you liked the video and I hope you learned something. But, you know, if you had any questions, just you know, put some comments in the video below. And if you wanted to see some more videos like this, you know, subscribe to our channel and you can hit the bell for notifications and we'll let you know whenever we post a new video. Hopefully it's something else that you might learn something and something that you might like. So, my name is Cameron and this is Remodeling America.